Welcome to the channel, and today we'll be taking apart one of Kamikaze's most popular reviews on YouTube and show why Eminem is at a point in his career where he's got one thing set in stone. No matter what he does, he will never be able to sway the opinion of people that haven't liked his music for decades now. Look, I don't know if across the pond maybe the English grammar rules are different, but it's either people who haven't liked his music in decades or people who for decades haven't liked his music. I mean, come on. And for people who call me a grammar Nazi, I just like to say, see Godwin's law. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly normal. But the problem is fans taking people's opinions as fact, and that's the focus of this video. Yes, but when you use facts solely to just take in an opinion without any context, it's as worse as just taking an opinion as fact. Critics make you believe that Eminem's music has been bad for decades now, but like we've seen, the opposite is actually the case when the facts are considered. So many records have been broken by Eminem in 2019 alone, which shows that fans cannot get enough, but critics say otherwise. So every time the needle drop points out a good argument for why Eminem album sucks, he's just going to point to Eminem sales and how he's the most popular artist, which is kind of like what I like to call the Eminem C hammer effect, where uh, let's just say somebody like uh, we're in the early 90s and somebody says hammer suck. Would you think it would be a legitimate argument to say yeah but he sells I mean he's doing well so that means his artistic requirements are met in that he actually made a legitimate album no you would call that person trash and you would clown the person of course that's how I see this video the review was starts by reflecting on Revival's 2017 performance. Truth be told, Eminem had a pretty rough 2017, and all because he dropped one of the worst albums of the year, easily the worst album of his career, Revival. It's his opinion about the quality of Revival, but stating that it's one of the worst albums of 2017 is pushing it. Unlucky you, Eminem even acknowledged that it was one of the worst albums of the year. In fact, Anthony pointed this out in the video. Really the highlight, the crown jewel of the track is Eminem's verse where it seems like he has a lyrical moment of clarity, admitting that he sold a lot of his artistry up the river to become more famous, more popular, and that he legitimately took an L for his bad album last year. A handful of bars stood out when he was making this point. I don't hate trap, and I don't want to seem mad, but in fact, where the old me at? The same cat who would take that feedback and aim back. I need that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I've been saying. Where is that guy? Do you know where that guy is? Do you have his email or phone number? Is he coming back anytime soon? Isn't it ironic that Revival was so bad that it ended up as the second best selling hip hop album worldwide of 2017, right behind Kendrick Lamar's damn album, according to the IFPI? I don't think you know what the term ironic actually mean, but what is very ironic is that you bring up Damn, which is also a album that Anthony haven't really had the best of opinions compared to Kendrick Lamar's discography. Now that's very ironic, but continue on with your morality. In my opinion, this is an elitist view of music and it's a classic case of my music taste is better than everyone else. Because how else will one of the worst albums end up as the second most sought after album of 2017? No, I'm sorry. I see your position as more elitist. You're basically saying that his album, it should be critically acclaimed or artistic merit is based on how he it sells well i mean just think back in the 2000s or 2010s let, uh, we had people like justin beaver who was selling millions of copies by his lead song baby my world sold over a million copy but yet People wouldn't say that Justin Bieber was the uh, best artist or My World was the best album of the year just based on the sales. So your logic is trash. 
These are just the facts, not opinions, but facts about the presumed worst album of 2017. Actually, Anthony's worst album of 2017 was Triple X Tentacion 17, which, you know, ironically enough, matched the year that it was released. But it, uh, but Eminem's uh, uh, album was the second worst album of 2017, to be exact. The reviewer continues by stating, Oh, and there's also Eminem's painfully cringy bars on tracks like uh, Bad Husband and Offended, just to name a few. It's common to hear Eminem critics talk about how all Eminem fans care about is stats and sales. But if you've been with us for a while, you know that this channel also focuses on debunking that myth. And although I'm yet to break down Bad Husband, I have broken down Offended. And if you miss our breakdown of that video and would love to know how wrong this critic is about Offended, click the link that pops up at the top right corner now. Even though the song Offended was one of Revival's high points for me, one of the things that Anthony and probably myself and others would like to point out is it wasn't really that offensive, to tell you the truth. I mean, it did, uh, like, point out, um, you know, the whole Cosby situation, Ray Weiss, um, uh, Rachel Dolezal, but you know what, at the end of the day, like, a uh, quarter of the track was the hook, and the hook was nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I wish they could eat some worms, how immature. And I reason this to be that's why some of the more edgier lines on the whole track seem more like playground banter rather than stuff that would offend people. The reviewer also touches on songs that do not focus on Eminem getting back at his critics by stating this. There are some relationship cuts on this record where Eminem continues to lay out his struggles with romance and picking out Mrs. Wright and functioning normally in a healthy relationship. I don't know about this guy, but I adore this kind of songs from Eminem, for instance. Spacebound is currently my favorite song from Recovery. Dude, you like Spacebound? Spacebound had one of Eminem's worst, cringiest lyrics ever. Love is evil spelled backwards, I'll show you. I mean, not even close. And there's also the track Stepping Stone, where Eminem essentially apologizes to his former group D12. I like the personal angle, the heartfelt tone of the track, the performance from Eminem on an emotional level is pretty good, it seems sincere, but it's not really a high point on the album. Stepping Stone was a much needed throwback that most fans, especially from the early days, consider to be one of the best songs on the album based on comments from friends and on social media, but according to this guy, it's a low point. And the reason for this is something that shows you that this reveals knowledge about what makes up a good hip-hop song is not that solid. So I waited for his full audio to play because this douchebag cut Anthony off mid-sentence and before he got rudely cut off by his horrible editing. And you know, I shouldn't talk, but I'm still going to say it, horrible editing. He was going to point out how he feels that um, Eminem used D12 and that he didn't promote them like he did Slaughterhouse. Here's the quote. But for the most part, this apology song just feels like an extended excuse. Because it's not like Shady Records couldn't have backed D12 much in the same way that they did Slaughterhouse. And as Eminem explains on the hook, the whole motivation behind this song seems driven less by Eminem's feelings about the pain he might have caused people, and more by the awkwardness that he'll feel if he doesn't wipe the slate clean before his career hits rock bottom, and he might see some of the people who he hurt face to face. Which is kind of an awful reason to apologize for anything. I mean, throughout the song you say that you didn't mean to use D12 as a stepping stone, but all signs point to yes. And honestly, I don't really feel like this track is as deep or as meaningful or as helpful as legitimately putting an olive branch out there or finding some way to aid in the group's career at this point. Building on that suggestion, how come Bizarre, any of the other members in D12 wasn't featured on this album? I mean, you had Royce, but that's about it. 
Again, this is not the kind of production that you expect to be on an album from a top-selling artist, a platinum-selling artist. And what the hell is this ugly, completely unlistenable, jagged, melodic flow backed up with these synth strings that Eminem hits us up with in the last leg of the song? To my partners, I can't say how sorry I am. This is not how I planned for our story to end. At this point, the review shifted from somewhat constructive criticisms to just trolling. If you know about Eminem's history with D12, this song is like opening a time capsule, and the beat of this song the reviewer criticizes sent chills down my spine when I first listened to the song, but to this reviewer, that was the worst beat of the song. If you care so much about how it sounds, then the lyrical content and delivery, hip hop was the wrong genre for you all along, and you most probably adore mumble rap at the moment, since it's just about humming sounds with autotune see this part of the video as the equivalent of me saying to somebody hey you're singing out of tune and then they reply back i bet you listen to mumble rap and nickelback because you suck and that's uh, you suck uh, it's not my voice it's that you're trained and uh, you're trained to four four uh uh, uh choruses and one beat notes and all that shit like come on man it's not that serious and by the way he gave most of his tens to hip-hop albums to prove my point about why this reviewer should stick to reviewing mumble rap and pop songs he adds this there's also the song venom the closer on this thing and of course this song is going to be on the upcoming movies soundtrack that's that's just perfect. I can't really comment on this song outside of saying it, it has one of the ugliest choruses I've ever heard in Eminem's entire career. Venom, adrenaline, get him, get him, ain't gonna know what hit him, venom. How is this real life? How, how is this a real thing that a mainstream artist does? Venom has been criticized by many, but the good news here is that the people criticizing it didn't know how things will turn out and spoke too soon. If you're in doubt about the lyrical content of Venom, click the link that pops up at the top right corner now, and the stats of Venom say otherwise. On YouTube alone, the song has 257 million streams, on Spotify, 156 million listens, making it the second most streamed song from Kamikaze. In my book, that's a huge win for a song that has the worst hook ever in Eminem's career, according to this reviewer, who's been overly dramatic. On YouTube, it has 4.4 million likes compared to 135,000 dislikes, and when Shady Aftermath applies for this song to be certified in the United States, expect at least a double platinum certification. A few opinions regardless of how many views they get on YouTube doesn't change the facts, and YouTube stats show that 97% of the people that rated the song love it. No matter how many people like the song, they could like the song for the verses and not the chorus or for the video and not particularly the song. But either way, that is a atrocious hook. In my personal opinion, I think it's called Venom because it's poisonous to your eardrums to tell you just certainly it's one of the more annoying tracks on the album, in my personal opinion. But hey, things get interesting in the review as overall, the reviewer claims to have liked four, but then ruins it by a sad attempt at virtue signaling. Oh, but I feel like Eminem kind of ruins the potential of the song by throwing out some idiotic and horrendous bars at people who didn't really deserve his ire. For one, Joe Budden, I think, had some really legitimate criticisms of Eminem's album rollout and the album itself. And then with some of the dumbest bars in the entire song, he attacks people like Tyler, the creator and Earl. How did Bodden not deserve the bars he received? And Bodden is a rapper, he's fully capable of fighting his battles on the mic. There's no such thing as what's deserved and what's not here. These are rappers, and if they have a problem with Eminem dissing them, which is completely justified, they can do it the old fashioned way and pick up the mic and respond. And by the way, Tyler and Earl deserve what they got on the album. A little bit of research and you'd realize they were running your mouth for too long needed an awakening. Tyler was trashing Eminem's albums on social media. He's also a rapper so he had it coming, and Earl in a 2015 interview even went as far as insulting Eminem fans but somehow this reviewer believes this in them wasn't justified. 
and those bars directed at Tyler and Earl are some of the most memorable and clever on the song. The reviewer just got up all in his feelings to virtual signal here. Look, people were personally mad at the song Fall because Eminem used another word that starts with an F and an A, which the term is faggot. Now, I know that you probably wouldn't care because you're a heterosexual, but what if Eminem used the term nigga? Well, use the term nigga again against you since you're clearly a black African who immigrated to Britain. Would you be okay with this? Would you find this to be okay? And surely you would say something like Eminem been using the term faggot for years or some malarkey like that, but he pussied out and censored the word in even the explicit version. So you can't even use his his uh, use of it in the past to justify his use in the present. So come on. These are the final thoughts of his kamikaze review and shows how this reviewer saw this as a personal attack. All I hear is emotions at this point. Okay. Yeah, kamikaze overall, it's not as bad as Revival. There is quite a bit of this record that I think is pretty listenable. A couple tracks that I actually feel are kind of good. But also there is a lot of blissfully ignorant and totally out of touch trash on this thing. A good chunk of it is pretty much unlistenable. It's pretty much a mixed bag with way more misses than hits. So majority of the album is unlistenable according to this reviewer. So who got this album to over 1 billion streams on Spotify months ago? Who got Venom to over 200 million views on YouTube? You'd wonder why a reviewer would sound so elitist in a review, but little fame does wonders to the ego. Kamikaze ended up as the best-selling hip-hop album of 2018 and was the only hip-hop album to cross 500,000 pure sales in the United States. This reviewer rated the album a light 4 over 10 which is closer to 3 over 10 than average. But even based on the critical average from so-called professional reviewers, Kamikaze ended up with a 62 on Metacritic and a listener score of 7.9 over 10. Encore actually is rated higher than Kamikaze, so i just like to say that that may state something, I don't know. But i just like to say just because your album sells well doesn't mean that you're autistically the best or anything like that. I mean, come on, dude. And i just like to also state that it, one of the things that people had a problem with is the blatant hypocrisy. I mean, he complains about all these new rappers being uh, materialistic and obsessed with drugs, yet he pushed Eminem, and on those D12 albums, he talked about popping pills, which is the same thing that people do to Tay, to the Tay, that to Tay which is talk about popping Zan. So it's kind of make you look like a contradictory hypocrite, but that's just me. Please like, subscribe, share this video, and I am out, you stands.